Good afternoon. I'm still reporting on freedom. So is there any other evidence that there was a shooter on the grassy knoll in Dealey Plaza on November 22nd, 1963? First of all, in one survey of over 100 eyewitnesses in Dealey Plaza that day, half of them heard a shot only from the grassy knoll. Another survey taken in 1978 by the House Assassinations Committee found that 20% heard a gunshot only from the grassy knoll. And remember, the grassy knoll area had less than 5% of the people interviewed. The vast majority of eyewitnesses were much closer to the Texas School Book Depository. Secondly, immediately after the assassination, many of those who were close to the grassy knoll having seen the horrible headshot and knowing immediately that it was an assassination and knowing where the deadly shot came from, started running in that direction. Several policemen were among the pursuers. In fact, one of the motorcycle men in the Kennedy procession pulled to the curb, parked his motorcycle, and ran up the grassy knoll as well. What happened? It was well organized. Immediately after the headshot, two witnesses saw two suspicious men behind the picket fence on the grassy knoll. But the man with the best view was deaf mute Ed Hoffman. He was standing on the overpass about a hundred feet away. I saw a man standing here wearing a black hat and a blue jacket. I saw a puff of smoke and I thought it was a cigarette, but it wasn't. He had a gun, and he walked towards the railroad. He tossed the gun to the second man. Then he turned and straightened his jacket, adjusted his hat, and walked casually away. The man with the striped shirt, the railroad shirt, walked over to the electrical box with the gun. He took the gun apart. He put it in a toolbox. He then walked slowly away in the direction of the railroad track. There are many other pieces of significant evidence that could be analyzed here. For example, the evidence that Oswald was merely set up to take the blame is significant. Upon his arrest, Oswald had no gunpowder residue on his face, an impossibility when shooting a high-powered rifle. Many years ago, these photos of Oswald holding the rifle he purportedly used were exposed as a hoax, and yet they are still used today by proponents of the lone gunman theory as evidence. Why would you leave a deliberate trail of evidentiary breadcrumbs if you were going to kill the president and then get away with it? So here is my summation. President Kennedy was shot by a team of professional mafia assassins, probably recruited from France. It is clear that the CIA had been using mafia killers for years, especially in trying to kill Cuban revolutionary leader Fidel Castro, who, after taking over in Cuba, kicked the mafia and their lucrative gambling casino business out of the country. Planning was probably overseen by some arm of American intelligence, be it the CIA or rogue CIA agents. Certainly, the 1978 House Assassinations Committee found that there was sufficient evidence to brand it a conspiracy and charge the CIA with deliberate obstruction of justice. This points the way for future researchers. The Mafia just didn't have the reach, in my opinion, to organize this alone, nor did they have the resources to manage the years-long cover-up. In addition, most of the major Mafia figures involved met untimely deaths. Lyndon Johnson probably played some role, though if I were Johnson and I knew exactly when and where the assassination would happen, I think I would have positioned myself much farther away from the upcoming lead rain than in the car immediately behind the Kennedys. For this reason alone, Governor Connolly can be ruled out. One thing is for sure, as those involved die off, much more will come out. 
I remember specifically hearing on a local radio station in Northern Virginia within months of the assassination that J. Edgar Hoover had sealed some of the files he had on the Kennedy assassination for 75 years. Hope to see you again on that occasion. I'm still reporting on freedom. Good day.